Hello everyone, welcome back. Today I'd like to show you all some pretty interesting phenomena. Now we've talked about nubs in other videos and you see nubs in the picture you're looking at right now. Nubs have been used for lots of different purposes it seems and there's lots of different sites that showcases them and I've seen a few other channels and researchers look at this phenomenon and in Egypt they show a few good examples but I've never seen a comprehensive video that shows all the Egyptian examples. So what I've done today is I've tried to compile as many examples from all around Egypt. I'm going to exclude the nubbed lids on the boxes for now because I think that's a separate topic that needs its own video and deserves its own video. But I am going to showcase one of them today because it's unique at the site that it is at and one of the larger examples. So I found six different sites that showcases different nubs, different configurations of nubs, and we're just going to go through them and look at them and see what we think. Now, first we're going to start with the Giza Plateau, and the Giza Plateau has more than most people think. Everyone knows about the Minkari casing stones and the nubs on those, and it's a very good example, very popular example, but there are more at Giza than just these. So these are pretty typical of what we see in Peru and really all over the world. These pairs of nubs and this is a I want to say a variation of the Peruvian style. It's regular courses, not very polygonal, but the puffy exterior. It's a surface treatment. A detail of one of the nubs, you can see they are granite. You can see the profile is somewhat rounded. They aren't very regular or uniform or formal. And you can see some very odd instances where there are even four on one block or two opposite each other on a block. And these are not very conducive to lifting nubs, I would say. Something in this configuration, yes, I could see uh, lifting nubs. But why the extra set of nubs on top? It's, it looks like original fitment to me. I'm not sure if these would have been re positioned from their original fitment, it's very odd that these have these extra nubs on them. And this one on top is a lot smaller, shallower, less defined than the lower. These are almost a perfect pair. Very interesting. And then of course, we've talked about these before. These are right next to what we were just looking at in the Makare Funerary Temple. And these blocks have this extra lip of material around them and then also little residual, slightly broken off nubs on one of the blocks. And then of course there's the portions of the Mankari Pyramid that have smoothed off sections, and that's a whole other can of worms, why they decided to smooth off certain sections and leave the rest puffy and with the nubs. Uh, one area around the entrance seems pretty obvious, but there's other areas that, you know, why just have these random spots of smooth stones. And just for reference, apologize for the horrible quality, but this is good lighting. It shows you all the nubs around the portion that they decided to smooth around this entrance, and then some other little maybe random nubs on some of these blocks, singular pairs. Maybe this was even three nubs on one block. I believe even above the top here, three nubs. Interesting configurations. Two, maybe one on top again. Small, large. Very interesting. But there are more than just at the Menkaure Pyramid. The Khafre Pyramid, the Middle Pyramid, also has nubbed casing stones. And thank you very much to Ben at Uncharted X for letting me use these photos. Because I am a patron, he lets me use these photos. And this is one of the reasons why I'm a patron of his. He gets great photos. Look at this. Do you, has anyone seen these before? Has anyone, another researcher, showcased these? Nubbed blocks. This is limestone now. Khafre Pyramid. Very interesting, the same kind of configuration. It's a roughly shaped or crudely shaped nub, not very defined or formal or uniform. You can see another eroded pair on the block next to it, and then one down here. Some of these, they might even have been chiseled off or attempted to have been chiseled off in the past. It really makes you wonder when you see some of these marks on some of them, the damage, how that happened. Here's another angle, this lower one, very beat up, right? Could could have been just aging and weathering, but 
Perhaps some of this is deliberate damage and attempting to remove the nubs. That's in my conversations a lot lately. See another one here. Interesting depression in this one, no nub. Perhaps an inverted nub, that's another interesting term I've been using lately, inverted nubs. And then just a good detail of one here. You can see it has a flat lower profile and a rounded upper profile. This is conducive to lifting. This would be the correct configuration for a lifting boss, I would say. A gap underneath for a rope to go under and to be lower, for the block to be lowered down. It does seem like that in some instances. And then there is this nub. Does anyone know where we are right now? This little diagram is of the portcullis area of the Great Pyramid. The Grand Gallery comes up to here, and the King's Chamber is in here. So what do we see on one of the portcullis slabs? We see a nub. And this isn't just an illustration, a fanciful design. This is real architecture. This slab is still in situ in the portcullis area of the Great Pyramid. Now here we are looking at it from the back side. It appears to maybe be two blocks or a cracked block, one single block that has cracked. It's hard to tell, not very many photos of this slab. And if you go around to the other side of it and look up, you will see the small nub on the slab. Very few, I, I wanna say this is the only photo that is on the internet that shows a nub inside the core of the Great Pyramid. I believe it's the only nub inside the Great Pyramid. Very interesting that it's on one of these slabs and in a configuration that it could be for lifting, but it's very small, very shallow. I'm not very sure what the intention of this nub is. It's very curious that it's there at all. And there are other granite bits that have been pulled out of the Great Pyramid from the well shaft, the grotto, uh, perhaps these were parts of the portcullis area, other slabs, or maybe these were other installations inside the pyramid. Very interesting, though, circular holes. You don't see many photos of these. I believe this is one of the only photos of it here. So that's pretty interesting. Inside the Great Pyramid, in the core of the Great Pyramid, there is a nub. What does that say about it, and what does it say about the builders, and how connected all the other nub builders are or could have been. Now next we're gonna go over to the Osirion. This is one of my favorite examples because everyone focuses on the big, the big megalithic blocks and those are impressive, the finely dressed blocks in the center, but the perimeter wall, that's where the detail is. That's where the builders show themselves. So I have a few photos here. We'll just go through them in the order that they're in my gallery and talk about them. So the perimeter wall, yes, there's polygonal elements small filler stones at corners, and faint shallow nubs, hairs, and singular nubs. And in other angles, we'll, we'll see better, better lighting and better uh, resolution. Again, same region, but much better resolution. You can see the faint traces of where nubs were, or maybe this is just as far as the nubs protruded originally. And what does that say about their intent? Are they really for lifting if they're just faint traces like this? And even this small one, I mean, some of these blocks, do they even require the lifting nubs? And again, why wouldn't they be the same standard configuration on all the blocks if it was a standardized method? And the more you look, you could even say that some of these nubs are inverted a little bit. Perhaps they protrude and then they recess. Again, very interesting. I have a couple old photos of the excavation of the Osirion, and one of the old photos shows some very interesting things that you cannot see today because of the current water level. We're going to look at that in a second. And you really don't see any nubs on any of these smooth megalithic blocks in the center. They seem to be all uniformly finely dressed. I was talking to uh, Ziggy Dan, shout out Ziggy Dan, uh, in one of his videos on the Maltasites. There is a cool little recessed cut with another cut inside of it, a stepped cut. I see that in a few places. Uh, one of the places was Malta and then perhaps maybe Pomapunku, some of their recessed cuts. 
very interesting why why is it done but that's a whole another can of worms but it's just an interesting hallmark perhaps to see if you can find any other examples of that it's very interesting and here's an interesting section of the perimeter wall back in the corner it shows some interesting processing on the surface of blocks perhaps some nubs just a lot of weird angles going on here and another small filler stone at a corner interesting now here we're going to start to see some of the ones that are a little more obscured today now down in this green horrible water you can see a few faint traces of nubs you might not recognize them as nubs here but in some other photos and other angles you're going to be able to see a little bit more convincing evidence i just love this old photo because it shows that they had a steam engine in the osirion at one point and you can see they had some kind of tackle system so they were moving blocks around just another really good angle of this specific corner it seems to seems like there's a lot over in this corner some small ones big ones this one very particular uniform regular square one that seems to be one of the only ones like that one more angle here of that same wall you can see some of these lower ones maybe these are inverted nubs where they're actually pushed in con concave instead of convex which is very interesting right and another small little weird filler stone little trapezoidal filler stone here at this corner and then another rectangular filler, st filler stone above that how about that and even this lintel look how this lintel has nubs this big one and then this one is just very faint it's almost not even there and this old photo is one of the best photos this is one of the ones i wanted to show you all the most from the osirion because you can't really see this today the water level is up a lot higher and what do you see on this block to the right you see nubs two here a pair and then maybe another one on the other side very interesting block i bet if we could drain some of the water out these would still be there and perhaps others under the water level think about that then there's the blocks that go around the corner but that's a whole another can of worms as well it needs its own video and also there were keystone cuts with clamps more than likely at the osirion perhaps maybe partially the reason why some of these blocks are missing today to get the clamps the metal was valuable also the blocks but you can see on some of these lower courses where the water line is just below that water line is where we were looking in the old photo that's where these nubbed blocks are here's a good photo that shows them the water is a little bit lower and over on the left there's a few protruding bits of material there and also here by this weird little set of stairs it's like two or three small stairs cut into the stone and then a pair of nubs on this block here this configuration two nubs on a thin slab i saw that at tiwanaku so another global connection and we'll go ahead and jump over to tiwanaku so i can show you guys see these thin slabs on parts of the pyramid here they have pairs of nubs one here one here some of them don't but some of them do and here's a better angle of that little weird set of stairs and one of the obvious nubs here and that's it for the Osirion pretty much we'll move on okay so next we're gonna move on to Philae and the kiosk of Trajan there we have talked about this site before in my series so I'll go a little bit faster through here but we have to think about with this site the river used to do this so they have moved the site and the other temple by it so they are not in their original locations today but I want to say they did they've done a faithful restoration and relocation of these sites it looks like everything is in its right place it doesn't look like they've removed anything that was in the old photos not that's not there in the new photos I think for the most part all the nubs and other hallmarks were left alone when they relocated these temples and here's some proof when they were moving the temple you can even see down here this lower retaining wall this is actually more of a bevel block wall and we didn't really talk about that in the bevel block series today it's kind of more covered up with foliage and grown up but in some other photos i found you can see that this is a much more beveled wall than you see normally in egypt and just to show you guys one of the photos here's a little more modern photo of this retaining wall in the front and you can see that these are actually beveled blocks most of them maybe crudely beveled maybe not originally not ancient like the other examples maybe a legacy block something to think about i think there's obviously mortar in between them today 
after they've been relocated, I'm sure mortar was applied, but perhaps the original configuration of this retaining wall was stone on stone. And I'd have to get really close, high quality photos to find out what kind of bevels and margins these blocks have. But just from other portions of the temple, you can see like this wall on the left, there are bevel blocks here and some of them are just heavily eroded. Perhaps some of them are restacked and reconfigured. And maybe that's why some of this looks so haphazard. Maybe there's some damage going on. Perhaps some of these blocks have really eroded nubs on them. And maybe they're just hard to see in some photos. I don't know if we'd have to look. Some of these photos you can't really tell, but there aren't any better quality ones in existence. So it's very important if you find any high quality ones to hold on to them and categorize them. There are bevel blocks in Egypt. And just another another side tangent that we'll probably talk about another day. Uh, some of this weird vertical scoring, I've seen this in a few areas. Sometimes it's horizontal here. I've heard that uh, explained different ways. Some people say it was maybe where uh, people sharpen their spears and swords against the columns. That's, something, that's an interesting idea. But there's more of this on the exterior of the kiosk of Trajan that we're going to see in a minute. So first, the nubs. These are very strange. They appear to be in a somewhat random configuration. These, these facade elements, they kind of swell out, like maybe almost like facade columns. They have nubs on them. That reminds me of Hosin Suleiman in Syria, has that one corner of the temple, has that same temple facade, column facade motif with nubs on that one column. And again, you can see below some of this vertical scooping or sc scratching. It's very interesting stuff. Sorry, the watermark is covering it. We'll see better photos. But again, you can just see these this, this somewhat concentrated, clustered area of nubs here. Very interesting. Not on all the blocks, not uniform, not standardized. Here's a really good high quality photo. Shows you on that lower right hand portion. Those nubs again seem concentrated over there. Not so much. There are other instances, but not so much in the other areas. And then more of this scoring or scooping vertical scooping in some of the blocks and over here very weird it looks like an impression or imprint almost like scoop marks in some of the serapium boxes and not too maybe these are beveled blocks below as well you see that some of these have hard margin lines on them very interesting a lot of them are broken away that's probably why you can't tell today these blocks above do have hard margin lines though and the interesting scratched surface it looks carved to me. I don't know how other how else to describe it. It could be some people say that's machine uh, scratch marks. It, they'd have to be pretty precise and uniform for me to say that they're machine made. But we see all variating styles and uh, levels of quality when it comes to these scratch marks. Um, I also want to point out a small filler stone here at this corner. And then in some of these lower blocks, I just noticed there are these square traces in some of them. I don't know what that's about. They seem to be in a, maybe a few of the blocks odd and then again just while we're here uh, bevel blocks on the lower portion and then you look above again and some more of this very weird vertical scratching or scoring scooping of the stone and then even more examples of this weird scratching down here it's all it all seems to be concentrated at the bottom around the bottoms of these temples and walls so it kind of is making me think that it was someone scratching something against it, a spear point maybe, perhaps. And then some more of these perhaps maybe rougher bevel blocks over here in this main structure. And then it's interesting how there is smooth sections and then the rougher sections, and the smoother sections are focused around the artwork. So they could smooth out the surfaces if they wanted to. You know, obviously there's been repairs. When you look at a lot of Egyptian temples, you have to wonder, where is the bare block? What is the original block? How much has the original block been resurfaced or repaired, plastered over? All kinds of recycling of the sites happens over time. Philae has keystone cuts as well, just like Elephantine Island and lots of other sites in Egypt. Really impressive, smooth internals. There are no nubs that I could find on the inside. Everything is very nice and smooth and perfect. The capital design, very similar to the Kalabsha temple that we looked at earlier on in my bevel block series. That temple has some very interesting processing going on on the walls. 
A couple interesting old photos that I did find. You can see how much mud brick there was around this kiosk. They were building more structures over time around it. And some of this upper structure has some weird holes in some of these blocks. And perhaps some of this stuff is filled in today. A lot of these square anchor points, perhaps, and circular installation points for things. Other decoration and implements and in installations of things we don't have today that have rotted away, obviously. This old photo of the bevel block retaining wall. And then this photo, which is really interesting because you can see this smaller secondary temple here with some very megalithic blocks at the bottom. And it looks like a lot of this has been built up around. You can see the original outline, the footprint of this little temple, and then how it's been completely filled in by later peoples with inferior mud brick. But it looks like perhaps this small temple is contemporaneous with the larger temple by style and level of execution. And then we're going to jump over to the Serapium for just a minute. The Serapium is a site that deserves its own video. It actually deserves its own series of videos, and that is why Ben at Uncharted X is making that series, and I highly recommend everyone go watch that, because as far as I can find, guys, on the internet, this one screen grab of his video when he went, Yusuf Awiyan, this is the only photo I could find of the large box that is not on display with the rest of the boxes at the Serapium. This is the one in the back, and it's covered up with plastic. This lid design is different than the others. This box is larger than the others. And you can see faintly here at the top, this lid, the bed frame style lid, I like to call them. You can even see another one in Ben's new video on the Maidun Pyramid. It has a smaller version of this box at the bottom of it. it has nubs on it as well, a pair of them. But in this instance, there's only one. It seems to be that same rounded top profile and perhaps a flat bottom profile. And that does remind me of the Khafre casing stones and Makari casing stones. So perhaps contemporary with all that architecture. And while we're here, just I want to point this out because I find this fascinating. Thanks again to Ben. This is one of Ben's uh, patron photos. You can see this is in, his, in one of his videos. You can see Yusef Awiyan show this small tunnel. It, it's covered with rocks. He removes some rocks and then they shine the light down and the camera down. And you can see that it goes on and on. And you don't know where it goes. And I don't believe it's ever been charted or mapped before. So that is a very interesting region of the Serapium that I would love to know a lot more about. It reminds me of one of the small tunnels that uh, Andrew Collins explored in the Tomb of the Birds. You can see some of his videos on that. I'm sure you just Google Andrew Collins Tomb of the Birds. And you can also see the video Zahi Hawass made called Bats that Zahi made after he was told about the cave from Andrew Collins. So you can watch those videos and make of that what you will. And then we're going to jump over to the Temple of Qasr el Sagha. And I've done a video. You can look it up, the Temple of Qasr el Sagha. This video is one of only, I believe, two or three videos of this site. And I don't believe any of my other fellow researchers have looked into this site in depth. And I really wish they would because this site has a lot of interesting hallmarks. So one of the ones right away here on the front, you can see that these blocks at the top have nubs. This is a small one. We'll see a better angle and resolution of that later. This one here has a pair of nubs, just like the ones at Giza, and they seem to have the same kind of profile, a rounded top, flat bottom. They're at the bottom of the block. It looks like a lifting nub, but where's the rest of them? Perhaps some of them were knocked off, but none of the other ones seem to have any material knocked off in those areas of their blocks. Something to think about, right? If it's a standardized technique. Here's the reverse angle here. You can see three. I believe there's only three. The two on the one block, and then this faint one on this larger trapezoidal block. It's very interesting. That is not going to lift anything. Perhaps there was more of it in the past. Still, where's the rest of these faint ones? If it was a standardized technique and if they were knocked off, these blocks look pretty pristine to me. You guys tell me. And just to recap, this site does have some pretty weird blocks in its architecture, some multi-sided blocks. And really, there aren't any more instances 
of the nubs in their obvious forms, perhaps some faint ones here or up here, but I want to show you guys the most compelling examples and any other instances that I see here, it's it they they're too faint to call them nubs or too crude and undefined to call them nubs. Square holes at corners again, missing corners. There were probably filler stones here, just like at the Osirion, something to think about. The inside is pretty smooth and stark. There are no nub. This flared cornice is the only decoration, and along with this little trim on the columns, but otherwise there's really no decoration. Stark, no nubs. All kinds of destroyed blocks here. I still have no idea what some of this could have been. Maybe some coping stones around the top. A lot of weird square indentations in a lot of this stuff. Some of it doesn't look natural. And I just can't understand why only three nubs at this site. Perhaps there's a few more, but not enough to call it a standardized lifting method. So there must be some other esoteric meaning to the nubs at this site, or they imply something else entirely. And then finally, I'm really excited to show you guys this because there's only two photos on the internet that show these. And I didn't even know about this site until about six months ago when Brian Forrester mentioned it. He went there. Uh, it's, it's not him that took the photos. I don't think he was able to get access to this specific area. Uh, first, let's let me show you the the article that I got it from. You can I'll give you the link in the description. You can scroll through this and see some of the information about the tombs of the nobles and some of the interesting architecture that they pointed out. These are the this photo and another photo are the ones we're going to look at, but you cannot zoom on these. You're going to have to search Google or maybe Pinterest has them, but I found them on Google in high res. You just have to search tombs of the nobles and high res images and spend a little bit of time searching for them. There's, they noticed some other interesting things like bedrock processing with squares in it. The article is definitely worth skimming through and looking at some of the other stuff. Uh, cuts in the bedrock, undercuts, interesting things. Perhaps areas where installations were. You see these square holes here. And then I believe this might be a nub, but it might also be a part of a piece of trim that went around and part of it's broken off. You can see the discoloration. They describe it as a detailed finished strip of facade. So perhaps. And then they also noticed some weird processing on some of the blocks. It looks kind of like a lipped block to me. Uh, they just say, say tool marks. They don't really notice some of the other oddities, but it, something worth looking at, maybe looking into. But we'll focus on my photos here because these are the ones, great resolution, and they show the evidence the best. What do you make of these, guys? There's one, two, three, four, and five, maybe a few others broken off, perhaps, but this odd cluster of them here. I looked all around the tombs of the nobles, and I couldn't really find any other instances as obvious as these. Perhaps there's a pair of small ones over here. We'll see in the next photo. Perhaps. Again, these are the only two photos I could find of them. That's that's almost too small to call nubs. I don't know. But for sure, this one with the cord wrapped around it. These two here. A more elongated one and a more square one. And then over here, another square one. And then this one very oblong and perhaps even a secondary nub on it. Very strange. These are the only ones I could find. Notice the processing marks on the bedrock. It's very flat. And then there's some more of these weird undercuts and cuts in the bedrock. And I even think I see a bevel block over here on the right. You see the hard margin on the block. So the Tombs of the Nobles is definitely on my radar now. I don't believe there's a lot of information on this site. Not many people have been to this site. I think Brian Forster just went to it for the first time, so like about six months to a year ago, when I saw his video on it. So there's going to be a lot more to learn about from this site. But so far, it's very, very interesting. One other, I'll throw this out at the end of the video here, one other potential nub at the Tombs of the Nobles. If you look over here on the right, there are these two tapering bedrock columns. And I want to say that might be a nub above this doorway. I don't see any other reason for it to be there. But that's kind of a reaching example. 
I think the other examples are a lot more compelling, some of them very strange in their orientations and configurations. Like I keep saying, if it was a standardized method, we would see more instances of them on all of the blocks. Even if they were knocked off, you would think someone would take the time to knock some of them off. They would take the time to knock all of them off. So why do we only see a few, in some cases, clustered regions of them, pairs, sometimes single instances on blocks where maybe you would need two if you're going to use them to lift. So you need to keep an open mind. I try to keep an open mind on the purposes behind some of these nubs. I don't think we're there yet. I think we just need to catalog all the instances of these nubs all around the world in every configuration and orientation. And maybe then once we've gotten all of them cataloged and we've, we've gotten ourselves familiar with them, then we can start proposing hypotheses about their functions and purposes. So thank you guys again for hanging out with me today. I would like to give a couple shout outs here at the end. Like I said before, Ben over at Uncharted X has a video on the My Doom Pyramid. Watch that, the box at the bottom, very interesting box. Supposedly one of the oldest or the oldest example of that style. That's new to me, I've never heard that. We see a lot of these boxes, so if that's the oldest of these boxes, that's very interesting. And then I want to give a shout out to another channel I just recently subscribed to, Ancient Presence. I've watched one of their videos about four months ago on the Sphinx. It was good footage, and they just released another video yesterday about Giza and some of the features around it that not many people focus on. So like Ben at Uncharted X and Luke at Enigmas of the Ancient World, looks like we have a couple other guys who are interested in the topics we are talking about, and they're willing to go to some of these sites and bring us back the footage. So give their channel a look. I appreciate you guys for hanging out with me today. And we will talk to you next time.